Hey guys, what's up? Today we are gonna go into that thrift store right there, buy things, and then we're gonna sell them for more money. And along the way, you're gonna see the screenshots from my cell phone as I'm looking things up. It's gonna be very helpful, and uh, I'm gonna teach you how to make some money. Let's go. Walking into the store, arguably the most important part of, of thrift store shopping. Wow, a cart there right for me. What is this stuff? This thing right here, uh, they want like 80 bucks for it. It looks valuable, but it's kind of in bad condition, so I'm not even gonna look it up. I'm not, I don't wanna mess with that. Let's look down on the collectibles. At this store, this portion is usually priced pretty close to eBay, so, uh, I don't see anything. There's an Xbox 360 back there, probably messed up. Let's go on to shoes. Shoes, we're gonna be looking them up on eBay. I sell shoes on Mercari and eBay. eBay is the most prevalent amongst resellers. Uh, for these, the brand is good. The shoes are really beat up and they're really cheap. If I wanted to, I could buy these and, and squeeze some money out of them, but I don't wanna do that, so I'm gonna leave them there. I'll look for some boots too. I like selling boots. There's a lot of boots around here. These are some nice Gore-Tex leather boots, but the brand is not the best. It's Montreal. And uh, when we look it up, using the keywords I have here that I, I just, you know, got by looking at the boots, we see again, they're profitable, but not the kind of profit I'm looking for. Ooh, the pants rack. I'm gonna look for jeans. Jeans are fun to sell. They sell a lot. These Levi 501 double X's, distressed leg, light wash those are the keywords i'm using to look them up and we're gonna see they're going for around 20 to 30 bucks uh, that's what this pair would most realistically sell for that's profitable but again not the uh the high value items or at least not the easy items i want to get if i sell on ebay i want to make a lot of money because it's more work more jeans so these are a lot of levi's here they're all priced kind of high. They're between like five and ten dollars. Uh, when I'm buying Levi's, or when I was buying more Levi's, one dollar was like the highest I'd want to pay for an average pair. Just because I want, if you're if you're buying a pair for nine bucks and you're selling them for twenty five, you're only making like eight dollars. There's some cool orange tag ones here. Uh, the orange tab jeans, those are a bit older, you know, 80s, 70s, 80s, early 90s. When you get any jeans you think are old or might be old, you want to start looking at the tags, the inside tags. And these, uh, these were made in Canada. Kind of unique, right? Not a lot of pants are made in Canada. It's not a manufacturing hub. Again, ended up not being valuable enough for me to buy them. But if you're a smaller seller, this might be your bread and butter. This might be what you go for every single time. And uh, this is how you look it up. Over to t-shirts. On the t-shirt rack, I saw these shoes. I said, okay, I'll give them a look. A little look-see. And what I found out kind of confused me. I don't know why there is such a huge variance in prices. So I bought these because I want to research more and figure out what the heck is going on. I don't know exactly what these shoes will go for, but the fact that the prices range from 25 to 200 bucks, that's at least worth learning it. Going back to the t-shirts though, uh, one of the things I enjoy selling is jerseys. This is a Jake Plummer jersey, Jake the Snake, drafted to uh, the Arizona Cardinals in like 1996. It's Reebok, not the best brand, got a little stain in it, not great, but it is on field and it is a big size. Uh, again, this is not like a, a home run for me. Probably could have got 20 bucks out of it, but just not not what I'm looking for. Ugh, this, this looks fake. This jersey looks fake, or at least in very bad condition. So, uh, you know, I think I might go back to uh, electronics now and see if I can make some money. Ooh, this looks good. Always look through like the miscellaneous bric-a-brac bins. Calcul two bucks, yeah, sure, guaranteed. This big one I might buy too, but I don't want to test it, and they're kind of a pain to pack. I'm gonna dig down here. What is this? Uh, hmm. Okay, so what I'm doing is I'm putting them in my cart, and I'm gonna look them up later, and so the order you see them on the right side of the screen is not the order that I'm finding them in, but uh, those are all the things that I'm buying. 
Right. Okay, here's a great learning experience. I looked up the model number on uh, Profit Bandit, and I couldn't find it. I go to Google, search the same thing, and it shows me the Amazon listing. Sometimes the way Amazon's search engine works and Google's work, they don't they don't match. And so you might have to use the other to find your uh, your secret listings, especially if they are discontinued or there are no other sellers. Going through more of these, an old Polaroid camera, um, I'm gonna put that back. Even though it's worth money, I don't have a tester for it, and so it's not, I don't wanna buy it and keep it forever. Quick uh, little, little reminder too, these are all Amazon FBA listings, meaning I prep them, send them to Amazon, they store them, they pick them off their shelves when the item uh, sells on Amazon, and then they mail it out to them. Uh, the bottom number you see in the right corner, the green number, that's the profit after all the fees. There's more to it than that. Not a lot more, but some more. But don't worry guys, I make so many videos about how to use Amazon FBA to make a bunch of money. Just subscribe and you will inevitably see something that helps you out. People will always ask me like, well, what do you look for in these stores? I look for a few main things. One, was it expensive at one time? Two, is it obsolete or discontinued? And three, does it work? Is it in good condition? Those are really my main, uh, the, the main criteria I go through. But a lot of it too is just looking things up. I've been looking up things in thrift stores for years, years of my life. And so I have a good idea of what sells, what doesn't sell. Sony, obviously great brand. Panasonic, Canon, that kind of stuff. Remotes, remotes sell really, really well. You wanna look at remotes, not all of them do, but this one right here, for example, I'm gonna sell it for probably $35. I paid a quarter for it. That's how this works. You buy low at thrift stores and you sell high on Amazon. All right, one last, uh, one last area. This thrift store has the large electronics in a different area. A lot of Sony stuff, a lot of like stereo centers, AV centers, but this right here is a DVD recorder. That's a guaranteed buy every single time. They want 10 bucks for it. That's a little much. It's going for, I think, uh, around 50 on Amazon, but uh, anytime you can see that, you're gonna wanna buy it. The next thing I'm gonna see, I already showed it in the right hand, uh, right hand screen, is a Sony VCR. This one's selling for $2. Everything here is super low, which is great. But uh, the reason I didn't I didn't jump on those stereo units is because I don't have the the, the correct um, speakers and wires and stuff to test it or the knowledge even I, I don't really sell them that much. They weigh a lot, so storage and shipping costs money. But uh, the DVD player and the Sony VCR, those are two great picks. I paid like 13 bucks total for them, and I'll make a decent amount of money off of it. All right, guys, we are back in the warehouse. Thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed this video. And if you like videos like this about how to make money at thrift stores or buying from Walmart or buying from Dollar Tree, subscribe. I make them all the time.